And to, become, uh, to be able to generate uh, new rabbits, each pair has to wait one month. Okay? And the question is, how many rabbits will be there one year after the first pair has been introduced? Okay. This is a, a problem which is very important for two reasons. And in general, the, we consider the bad reason as the most important, and the good reason is forgotten. That's sad. The bad reason for which it is considered as important is that, as uh, several of you know, is that, well, this is the Fibonacci sequence. This is a very important sequence. You get, uh, well, in one month you can count, then two, then three, then four, and the rule is that at the end of the year, you get uh, three, two, 233 pairs, uh, and the way you get it is with the following sequence, one, two, three, five, eight, then you will get 13, 21, uh, uh, 34, uh, 55, etc. And the, the rule is that each new month, the number of uh, rabbits is the sum of the, of the two previous ones. That's the rule. And this is <coughs> probably the, the most famous, the most important sequence in mathematics. It has so many properties. We could talk about it uh, for hours, there are books, full books, just talking of this sequence and its consequence for mathematics. It's really an important sequence. But, in fact, uh, <coughs> this is not exactly the, the, the right reason for which we should mention this problem of Fibonacci, because, in fact, Fibonacci himself did, did not understood what he did. He just put this problem in the Libera Baki and solved it manually. He didn't even understood that the number of rabbits did indeed. Well, uh, this one is the sum of this one of this one. He didn't understood that. So you, when you write his, uh, his solution is, well, at month four, there are uh, eight, uh, there are five, uh, five <coughs> there are three, uh, well, there are, there are five pairs. The, uh, t three of them are able to generate other ones, so I write the sum, etc. But never he, 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 he write well. He writes the sequence, but never he says, "Well, each term is the sum of the two previous ones." He does not say that. He does not study the sequence. He's not interested in that. So, for that, it's uh, it's really uh, the the important part in the Libera Baki. But there is another part which is really the 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 important part, uh, at least for what Fibonacci wrote himself, is the fact that it is the first time in history, as far as I know, <coughs> that mathematics tried to describe, to, to, to provide a model of um, a biological evolution, of a population of living, uh, living animals. Moreover, it's the, when we read the problem more closely, we we see that it is really um, given as a precise experiment. Uh, it starts by someone placed a pair of rabbits in a closed place, meaning that, well, okay, we're going to do an experiment here, okay? It's not uh, rabbits, well, well, not rabbits we, we've seen from far away on counting. No, it's rigorous. We have a closed place, so it's an experiment. And then <coughs> it gives some uh, quite... Uh, quite good numbers, so one month for, uh, for generating new rabbits is, uh, is quite convenient, it's, uh, it's, it's quite true, it's not, uh, well, it's not exactly that, but it's not far <coughs> from that, so numbers are quite good. And he's also he stops at one year. For him it is not a sequence that goes to infinity as we consider it today. It's, it's, it ends at the twelfth term. Okay, so that meaning that, of course, he knew that maybe the rabbits could not grow at infinity, <laughs> and there will be some day uh, uh, what we uh, what we what we uh, say today is a limiting factor. Is at some time there is not enough food, not enough place, not enough uh, anything, or diseases and something uh, cha necessary <coughs> forces you to change your model and to to, to refine it. <coughs> Okay, so <coughs> maybe, well, so 
we, we can study in, uh, the, the way the Fibonacci sequence is, is generated, but well, maybe it's not that uh, the, the, the most important part here. The, the Fibonacci sequence is interesting because it, it's a, uh, well, maybe you could ask, well, what's the link between the Fibonacci sequence and uh, the, the grain on the chessboard? <coughs> because in the, the, the tail of the grains on the chessboard, each, uh, well, we multiply by two. Here we do not multiply by two. We add two previous terms. It's very different. But what is interesting, one, one of the interesting thing, things in the, in, the, in the Fibonacci sequence is that it is uh, almost like uh, uh, we multiply each time by, uh, the, the, by a same, uh, th same factor. <coughs> and there is a, a number associated to the Fibonacci sequence is the golden ratio. Probably some of you uh, al already know the golden ratio. One plus the square root of five divided by two, which is close to 1.618. And uh, when writing the Fibonacci sequence, uh, when you, you go uh, well, farther, f uh, go uh, well, when you write number, uh, when you write terms. It is more, more and more like a sequence in which each term is multiplied by the golden ratio to give the following one. Of course, it, it cannot be exactly that because the golden ratio is a, an irrational number. It's not an integer. So when you multiply an integer by something like 1.618, in general, it does not give an, an integer. But it gives something closer and closer to, the, to an integer and closer and closer to the term of the Fibonacci sequence. So, in some sense, that could be made precise, uh, Fibonacci sequence is indeed the, the same kind of sequence as uh, the, the one uh, for the, uh, the, the grain on the, on the chessboard, that you multiply each time by the same amount. <coughs> so, uh, well, there after I have a translation problem, I didn't write the... the so I, I, ju I just put, to, to see that, sorry, it's in French. I wrote the, the, no, the, the Fibonacci sequence here, and then I do, to, to show that to go to, to from 21 to, thir to 34, I just divide 34 by 21, and I observe that it's this number. Then I consider the next terms, so 55 and 34, and the ratio is, well, Always the same beginning, and then uh, other thing. Uh, when we, c we continue, the, <coughs> the ratio of consecutive terms <coughs> is closer and closer to the golden ratio. OK, and when we go to uh, nine, uh, well, this number, we, you get the first decimals of the golden ratio. <coughs> so this was, this was proved, indeed, the, 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 the fact that the ratios are going to the golden ratio by um, by Edouard Lucas, which was a, a French a French mathematician in the 19th century. Lucas is not very famous in the mathematical uh, world, uh, is uh, mainly because he was mainly interested in uh, mathematical uh, games, recreational mathematics, and it's uh, well uh, for mathematicians. You know, there are important mathematics and there are games. And well, do not confuse them. And okay, so uh, Lucas w is a is a brilliant man in this tradition of re recreational mathematics. Uh, there is a tradition for in India. You have uh, people that uh, that did uh, mathematical riddles and things like that. The first one was in uh, the cranes on the chessboard, the, the <coughs> but there are other ones. And Luca, <coughs> among other things, proved that the ratios of the consecutive terms goes to this number, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And that's, uh, th that's quite important. <coughs> so, so, expectation, well, what? We don't know about uh, the, the way Fibonacci feels about uh, population growth. He didn't ro write many things about his rabbits. Even if it's important that uh, it was the first time a mathematical way of thinking to biology was, was set up in, in the Libera Baki. He didn't wrote much about that. We cannot even be certain that he was the creator of his own sequence. 
because as I told you, he also wrote about the, the, um, the grain of the chessboard story. He didn't mention where he heard about, uh, about it. So we don't know. Possibly, some, well, he just heard it or write it. At the time, it was very common. Uh, the copyright consideration did not exist at all. So we don't know for sure, even if Fibonacci was the real creator of uh, the Fibonacci sequence. But <coughs> after Fibonacci, we have some other people that uh <coughs> extracted this uh, uh, th this kind of doing mathematics and recreational mathematics. Uh, and Fibonacci was also for for part uh, uh, interested in uh, in recreational mathematics because I, as I said before, when he wrote the Libera Bacchi, he was uh, uh, communicating around around Indian numbers. He was well, let's use them. It's very powerful. So it was a so so he, he gave many problems, uh, fun, uh, funny problems uh, on the. <coughs> especially to help accountants at the time. He was himself uh, uh, involved in, in uh, commercial things. And uh, uh, for example, in, uh, when, when he solves the, the problem of the grains on the chessboard, when he, he writes the, the answer, then he said, okay, now guys, let's put a second chessboard after the, f the first one and continue to, do to, to put grains and that will give an even bigger number, okay, not 2 to the 64 minus 1, but 2 to the 128 minus 1. And let's compute, and he writes the number, the full number. Let's see see how, it's, how powerful it is. Uh, oh, he's, he's very proud of that. Um, <coughs> but after that, when, uh, well, when uh, different, different objectives are, are, are set up, and the, the first one is um, in the end of the 16th century, on the beginning of the 17th century, uh, something happens. Uh, still in the recreational uh, way of doing mathematics, first from uh, Cardano, you know of Cardano? Which is an mathemat uh, uh, Italian mathematician, a great Italian mathematician, one of the most famous one in the Renaissance. And, but next, if I mention you a guy named Jean Le Rochon, Maybe you didn't hear of him at all. <laughs> and I think that no, almost no mathematician even heard of, ever heard of Jean Le Rochon. Jean Le Rochon was a, a mathematical teacher in the beginning of the 17th century in, in, uh, in France. And he wrote the first book entitled Recreational Mathematics. It was a huge success in, in, the, in the 17th century. And we find something very interesting in, in Jean Lurchon's Recreation Mathematique, Recreational Mathematics, is the idea that, well, take a plant. Imagine that uh, it generates two plants in, uh, well, in, in one month. How many plants will be there in uh, 10 years? And you will, the, the, the earth will be full of this plant. And uh, consider the same thing uh, with, uh, well, uh, uh, some animals. And you consider an animal and uh, do, uh, do the same calculation, the same kind of thing as Fibonacci, but the idea is very different. The idea is to say that you can get huge numbers starting by only one or two, uh, two, 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 uh, two animals and just imagining nothing, nothing real special. In the, in the Indian uh, riddle of uh, doubling the wheat on the chessboard, it's arbitrary. How can we double uh, the grain on the chessboard? It's, well, it's kind of mysterious. Uh, okay, Cessa asked for it, but but <coughs> in Lurchon, it is for real. Indeed, if you take a plant, you can observe that uh, in several weeks, uh, then some other will be will be uh, uh, generated around it, and you count them. At the time, uh, France is very rural uh, country, so everybody knows exactly how many time it I it takes to to get uh, well to, uh, to 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 get uh, a cow to uh, a cow how to to get a uh, a baby, and etc. This kind of thing. So, and we have a very long. Uh, 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 several pages of this, and I said, "Well, that's enormous numbers. That's very nice." And this <coughs> evolved then and uh, get out of recreational mathematics at the end of the 17th century and become more serious. 
especially uh, so it's it concerns especially the, the the first demographs the first people that tried to study uh, historical evolution of y human population <coughs> and it started uh, in the end of the 17th century in uh, in uh, in England so there are people like William Petty uh, um, <coughs> on, well, on s s uh, William Grant, uh, etc. And one of their main uh, question was, uh, well, to study population, at the time there was a problem, no statistics existed. So they did not have to their disposal any, well, uh, any ev estimation of the number of people in England one century before, or, s or, or 60 years before, or even in London. It was difficult to know how many people were in London at the time. So Petty was the first to try to, to, to find it out and study the population of London. So well, there were one exception, one set of data, extremely precise and surely true. Nothing to, to well, nothing to contest about them. The real data was in the Bible. At the time, the Bible. So, uh, I don't know if you ever read the, the Bible, or if you heard of uh, things, but I, I, I don't uh, speak of, of the New Testament here. I, I mean the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, in the beginning, after you have the Genesis, and then you have a book named the the, the Book of Numbers. And what is in uh, in the book of Numbers? You have the uh, the precise uh, the precise uh, uh, list of the number of people of each uh, part of Israel. And at the time, it is regarded as authentic. It's God that asked the people to to to, to study how how much are you, uh, how many are you of this uh, of this tribe of this tribe. There are twelve tribes of Israel, and. In the 17th century, these data uh, are, necessary, uh, are necessarily regarded as authentic. So, the first demographs started to study this, this data and try to find out, well, how did the, the population of uh, Israel evolve in, that in, in time? So, and they imagine the same kind of evolution as, uh, well, the grain on, uh, on the chessboard. Each 12 years or each 25 years, the population is uh, doubling. And when adjusting your mathematical model to the data, you get a model of population of, of, population of, the, of the, the biblical time. 